Good morning, church. Yeah, I made it 80 years. Today actually is my birthday. If you are a guest here, please let us welcome you to our celebration. And by it, then be assured that you will leave plus and favor. Do we have any guests? Take my word for it. Okay, um, we've gone back to BSS Sunday. That's Bring Someone Sunday. That's going to be the third Sunday of every month we will be doing this. Uh, hopefully we can build this church. We're going to have a prayer night. That's going to be May 17th. We have a food pantry with Brother Brian over there. If you need food or want food, see Brian. Brian, want to raise your hand? Let him know who you are. There he is. Yay! Hey. Our children's ministry is going strong under Sheila's benevolent leadership. Sheila, want to raise your hand? Raise your hand over there. Thank you, Sheila. Bible study continues on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Pastor Sean, want to show you anything? There he is. that time of year again, and we're going to have our annual outing, picnic, and baptism. It will be at Pawtuckaway State Park, and it'll be on July 13th. Please put that in your plans. Cell phones, if you have any, please turn it off during service. Victory Walk with Pastor Sean continues on Saturday radio, WDER, 1320 a.m. and 92.1 FM at 10 a.m. in the morning. Pastor Sean still has a YouTube following, and it continues to grow, but still, the more the merrier. So if you want to join, go online to Sean Theodore and click to subscribe. Um, our worship team is still in need of additional instrumental. Please see Pastor Sean if you have anybody in mind for that. We do not have a service collection here, but we do have a giving box over there on the wall. Through the donations received, this church continues to grow and serve. If you are watching out there in computer land, you also can give by going to AbundantGraceNH.com and clicking on the donation bar. After service is dismissed, two things happen. One is a fellowship in the back room, and the other is an altar call up here with Pastor Sean. I'll leave you with this. Culture changes, churches change, life change, God doesn't. Amen. Thank you, brother. So, Ron, would you stay up here for a second? Yeah, happy birthday, number 80. He looks great, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So, we want to, as a church, we want to celebrate Ron's birthday. We're going to be celebrating with some cake and some fellowship after in the back room. We want to encourage you all to do the same. Ron's been a blessing to this church at Abundant Grace many, many years now, and he's been an out quite a while, and he does a great job, doesn't he, church? Yeah. Amen. Amen. So, on his special 80th birthday, it's a big 80 for him, we would like to all sing happy birthday to Brother Ron, so if we could all wish him a happy birthday, his happy 80th, let's sing on three, one, two, and three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ron. Happy birthday to you. And many more, plus the 80. The Lord has got big plans ahead for him, too, as he continues to serve the Lord. At 80 and many years beyond, I believe the Lord has great plans ahead for this brother. And uh, he's a big part of what we do here at this church, and uh, we'll all celebrate together. And uh, he's been a blessing to our church for many years. As any brother Ron, we appreciate him very much. God bless you, brother. Thank you. My brother Wayne can't, still can't believe he's 80. I couldn't believe he was 80. He's looking for an ID. He's looking for an ID. He wants a car to. The ID, brother. He ain't gonna allow you to purchase, you know, whatever. He's not purchasing meatballs. 
Amen. So uh, before we um, uh, continue in our service, if you could all uh, just step out of your seats, say hello to someone this morning. I know it's uh, an important thing that we do at our church, but we get to say hi to somebody. I don't, don't be shy. You just you get to step out of your seat, welcome somebody this morning. Say hi to somebody. It's not all these strangers this morning. Amen. See, for those who are watching online, see, we're a loving church, we fellowship, we have a great time. Come on in, and you'll get to see what we do here at Abundant Grace. You'll be blessed. When we got new seats coming in here. It's going to be really looking nice, so we're really blessed. we got some other plans to get some carpets in here and do some things to really spice up this place so we can really have a, a beautiful place. This is the house of God. A lot of people are why are you doing this? Why? why? This is for God. This is God's kingdom. We want it to look as good as possible. This is for Jesus. That ain't for me or for any kind of whatever. This is for Jesus. We want this place to be glorifying to him. People walk through the door, they be like, wow, this is God's house. Amen? Amen. Amen? That's what we want. And we just praise the Lord for his goodness. If anyone's new for the first time, we could just slip up your hand and say, I'm new. You know, it's the first time you've ever been here. We got two back there that are Amen. new. So we want to say hello to both of you. God bless you. 
It's Leah and um, Andrea. I was I was worried, but I said I hope I don't botch this like I do so many names. But we got Leah and Andrea back there, so say hello to Leah and Andrea when you get a chance. And it's great to have you both here today. God bless you. We have a couple over there too. We just want to say hello to as well. God bless you both. And uh, we're going to have a special song today, and we're going to call up Georgia. And we want to give her a round of applause. And I'm going to be singing a song. She was going to do on Easter, but she's going to do it today. So God bless you. Thank you very much. This is a song I was supposed to do on Easter morning, but I was very, very ill. So every day is resur Resurrection Day anyway, right? So it's never the wrong day to sing about the resurrection of Christ.
you are not alone. You have a father. You have a friend. You have healing. You are the head, not the tail. So I want you this morning to declare it with me. Let's praise the Lord together and sing with me now. the children at this time, so with Sunday school, God bless you kids, have fun back there today, the Sunday school teachers, as we uh, have our Sunday school class, we just praise the Lord for you, and uh, we're going to get into part three of our series, Grace Upon Grace, we know that without grace, where would we be, right? We'd be lost, but because God, what he did for us, we can't boast of anything but the cross, right? boast of our righteousness. We can only boast of his righteousness. Right. He did for us. Mm -hmm. All we do is go out and preach the word in a humble spirit. We just want to win people to Christ. Amen? Amen. So that's good. So again, um, I just want to announce something about uh, prayer night. It's going to come on the 17th. We have about literally 20 people on prayer night this Friday. We Praise the Lord. That was like the best we've ever had. 
Pat did great playing the music. We were worshiping like we had church, and then we had testimonies and prayers, and uh, we had a great time. And now uh, we got somebody new who's going to be working with us on the prayer nights. Uh, Viola is going to help us out with prayer nights. We really thank you so much. You want to talk about someone who's anointed for prayer? That's her back there. So we just praise the Lord for her. So thank you for plugging in and helping us. So I don't have to do everything. We have some anointed people here to do things for the Lord. The pastor doesn't have to do it all, you know, which is great. We've had people plugging in and doing things for Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Pat stepped in and he's been doing the music and he's been doing a great job taking those uh, songs and we praise God for him. Amen. Good job. And they'll continue to improve and improve and improve as we do more and more. And Aurora's been awesome up there as well. And just thankful for these young group that we have up there. Uh, praising God. We're going to get some instruments up here soon. We're going to get some guitar players. And we're going to get some bass players. We're going to get some people who jump around. Well, that's me up here. But we're going to get some people who do a lot of things for the Lord. Amen. So God is good. We're going to get into part three of our series, Grace Upon Grace. And... Um, I pray that this will bless you when we get into the next message in our series because grace is everything and we need to understand it and we see what God can do. So we'll start with prayer and then we'll get started in our message. So let's pray and ask the Lord to bless. Lord Father, thank you for the powerful worship this morning. I pray, Lord, that you would bless us as we enter into your Holy Spirit. I pray you bless this message. I pray it would, uh, it would just encourage and inspire people to get closer to you. I pray I would be led by the auspices of the Holy Ghost. I just thank you so much. Pray that my words would not be innocuous in any way, but it would be pleasing to you. We thank you and praise you for all you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Sometimes in life, before we get to our greatest success, we have to hit our greatest failure. Some, you're not going to succeed unless you fail. Anybody can say that. Anybody who's a successful business person, anyone who's a successful person in life, in relationships, ministries, whatever it is that they put their hand to, you have to be able to endure failure in order to get success. You're going to get setbacks in life, Lord. You're going to get times when you wanted to do something and your heart was so bent on it and it didn't happen the way you wanted to and it actually was a big setback. Has anyone ever been through setbacks, rejections, and failures? We've all been there from time to time. And you know what? God wants to use that failure to usher in your greatest success. Do you know that? The greatest business people who have ever, ever uh, entrepreneurs, those individuals have failed time and time again before they finally got their breakthrough. You know what the difference is? Those who become successful and those who fail. You know what the difference is? Those who fail get back up and keep going. They don't let rejection stop them. They don't let disappointment stop them. They learn from it. They feel the disappointment. And then what they do is they step up and they go forward. Because none of us are failures in the kingdom of God. Amen? None of us have lost anything. You know what? We've made mistakes. We've failed. You know? And we've failed many times in our lives. And, and I'm learning, you know, that sometimes failure doesn't mean give up. It means try again. I'll just give you an example of failure and success. And, you know, everybody knows I'm an avid runner. I run over 1,000 miles a year, pretty much. And so I do a lot of that. And in 2014, I was training for a marathon. And I was going to try to qualify for the Boston Marathon. And I was literally running one mile. One run, I would run 20 miles just in one run. So um, I was training and training. And I was, like, in the prime shape of a marathon. I was doing it like it was nothing. I was in such, such good shape. Somebody asked me to move something with them. They wanted me to move some little thing. They said, can we just move a piano? It wasn't a big piano. It was a smaller piano. They said, just move it. We'll, it won't take too long. So I ended up moving this piano. And all of a sudden, as we got it down the stairs, somebody, for some reason, he decided to twist the piano. And it went forward. And I just ran 20 miles for the first time in my life. It went forward, and it landed on my foot. And it hit it so hard that I was down screaming and yelping and the Holy Spirit came. There was no swears that came out. It was just ow, 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 ow. And the person that was there said, can I help you? I'm like, ow, 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 get out of here. Ow, let me ow my way through this 
trouble. I'm, I want to ow. I don't want to talk to you right now. Yeah, you can help me out. Ow! No, but I couldn't do that. Hey, everything's going great. You can help me. No. Just let me ow and leave me ow alone, please, so I can ow, ow, ow. So what happened? My foot was like pounding after it was done. It was swollen. It was like huge. I ended up going to the hospital, and I just ran 20 miles. I was a couple months away from the marathon. So I'm like praying to God, saying, Lord, please let this be just a a swollen foot or you know, a bruise. They came in and oh boy, they looked at it. They said, <laughs> said hopefully we're going to x-ray it. They came back and they said, you ain't running no marathon. You got Your foot is broken oh, completely. Wow. It was like snapped. like in the, You know that bone on the front of your foot? That painful one, if you press on it, that's the one that snapped. Oh. Yeah, they said, you have about six, six months recovery on this one before you can really get going. Me being stubborn, I, they, I was out. Of, I went 20 miles to get on crutches, and I was crutching, you know. But me being stubborn, I wanted to. Uh, yeah, I threw the crutches away in two days, and I, they gave me a boot. I threw the boot away in a week, and I'm like in sneakers trying to run. It ain't working. <laughs> and then I gave up. I gave up because I'm like, I can't run. I can't do it. And then I never ran a marathon again. I gave it up. Did other things. I recovered and did the 5Ks. And, things for running, but I did short runs. Did a, finally did a half marathon. You all came and got a medal for it and was well, but never did a marathon. So this year, I'm deciding 10 years later, I'm going to try and do a, the, the marathon in Manchester in November, my first one. I'm going to try it again. So, and if I can do it in a 749 pace, I can qualify for Boston. And I have a, I have a shot at qualifying. Because if you don't qualify, you have to pay like $5,000 to the charity, whatever. I don't want to do that for a race. So 749 is fast, 26.2. So, but you know what? Just because something hits you that's bad, disappointment like that, doesn't mean you give up. It means you get up and you keep going again. And then God will reopen that door. Sometimes setback doesn't mean a no. It just means either it's not God's timing or God has a plan for you first. He wants to humble you. I want to talk about a man today who had some setbacks. And he went from failure to success. How many people want to go from failure to success today? I want to give you the way to do it. You know what? And you know, you may get some ow, ow, ows along the way, like I did. You're going to experience that. You want to be a very successful business person. I look at success, this failure behind that success. And from that failure, you learn to be more appreciative. You learn how to be successful. And you become the best that God has called you to be. God sees you as champions. Now, the man's name is Peter, Apostle Peter. He was one of the most powerful apostles. Did you know that? He went with Jesus everywhere. He was boisterous. He spoke out. He was saying, you know, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, you know, flesh and blood doesn't reveal that to you, but the Holy Ghost is my, the spirit of my father has shown you this. Within two minutes later, Jesus said, I'm going to go and get crucified. And he said, be far from it, from you, Lord. And then Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> One minute he was being praised for being revealed. The Holy Ghost revealed that I'm the son of God. The next minute he's saying, get behind me, Satan, Peter. Satan speaking through Peter. Peter went from success to failure. And then he went from the failure to success. But I want you to understand that this man was so powerful in so many ways. Jesus was crucified on that cross and he was a martyr. You know, Peter was a martyr and he was martyred and he was going to be crucified on the cross the same way as Jesus. That was his martyrdom. You know what he said? I don't want to be crucified like my Lord. You need to get crucified upside down with Jesus. And he is a martyr and he is with God and he got a great resurrection. But I want to show you how he went from failure to success. I want to go to the book of Matthew chapter 26. You want to see success? You feel like you failed, right? I'm no good. I can't make it in school. I can't get enough friends. I can't have a successful business. I can't have a successful ministry. Ministry and all these things, success isn't by numbers. God looks at success as this, your faithfulness. God looks at success as somebody who's dependable. God looks at success as somebody who will do exactly what he tells you to do and leave the consequences to him. Can someone say amen? 
God says, if you're faithful over a few things, I will make you a ruler over many things. God is preparing you in the desert to take you to a place where you could not get to on your own. Can someone say amen? Little old you is about ready to be exalted to a new level of victory, favor, preferential treatment. This is what God does. He wants to test this out to say, if we will continue to praise God, even when things aren't going well, can you say, praise you, Jesus? I don't have much right now, but I still love you because you own the cattle upon a thousand hills, and you're all I need, Jesus. Can someone say amen? He is all you need. Amen. Now let's go to verse 31 of Matthew 26, and what does it say? Then say, say Jesus unto them, all ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. Jesus predicting his arrest and his crucifixion. You're all going to be offended because of me. You know what? The disciples didn't think they would be. Look at verse number 32. But after I am risen again. You know, is Jesus risen? Can someone say amen? He's risen. Amen. We just talked about that. It says, I will go before you in Galilee. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. All men could be offended, but I will not be offended. I will follow you no matter what, Jesus. This is what Peter said. Now, let me continue. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Peter, that this night before the cock crow, the rooster will crow, thou shalt deny me three times. Peter said unto him, though I should die with thee, yet I will not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. Peter said, I will die with you, but I will not deny you. You're going to get near on that cross? I will follow you to death. I will not deny you. Anyone... How many people here would not deny Jesus? You'll stay with him no matter what, even unto death. We all sound like Peter right now. <laughs> A bunch of Peters in here. Let's get put to the test and see what will happen. You know, I see people denying Jesus when things don't go their way. <laughs> when they're not getting the prayer answered at the time they expect to get the prayer answered, they deny Jesus. Where are you, Lord? I thought you answered my prayer. You don't answer my prayer. They're denying Jesus. People without even the pressure. Imagine when the real pressure comes. Do you know how many people have had to deal with pressure, persecution, real persecution? They've had guns pointed at them in the Middle East, and you know, they China, they get killed, they say, deny the name of Jesus or I will behead you or execute you. Then what are you gonna do? You see what I'm saying? How hard can it get? Would you stand for Jesus no matter what? You know what? We should all say yes, and that should be our desire, but we don't know. Peter thought he would die with him. He really, his intentions were good. So when we go from failure to success, Peter made a declaration. We have intentions, don't we? Our intentions are to reach our goal, right? How many people have an intention to reach their goal? How many people have goals today they want to achieve? Is there something you want to achieve in life right now? Something you're desiring, something you're striving for, something that you're looking forward to, whether it's going to college or whether it's starting a business or whether it's getting involved in ministry or whether it's starting a, a career or maybe you're trying to reach out into a, a music ministry or a singing career or whatever it is you're looking for to do. Maybe you're trying to do something in the community for the Lord. Does anybody have something they want to do? We all do, don't we? We have that intention. So did Peter. We go from failure. He went from failure to success. You know what? You're going to get bumps along the road. So he made a declaration. Now I want to go to verse 20, uh, verse 69. Now look what happened. Jesus was arrested. He was arrested and he was being persecuted real bad now. Just like he said he would. He got captured. The... Uh, Romans were persecuting him, and he was going to be <laughs> crucified. Now look at verse number 69. It says, Now Peter sat without in the palace, and a damsel came unto him, saying, Thou was, all, all, thou was with Jesus of Galilee. Thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. I don't know no Jesus of Nazareth. 
Didn't he just say, I wouldn't deny you? I'll die with you? What happened? And look at this. He denied him once, right? Jesus said he denied him how many times? Now look at verse number 71. It says, And when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said unto them that there that were there, this fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. So another person said, He was with Jesus of Nazareth. Then again he denied. So when Jesus says something, doesn't it always come true? There's the second denial from Peter. This is the great apostle who loved God, who served, who walked on water with Jesus, who preached the gospel, who was with him in the Mount Transfiguration, doing so many things for the Lord, doing more than we could all ever think of, you know, hope to do. Peter was doing more than all of us. He was preaching and sharing Christ everywhere. He was on fire for the Lord. Amen? And now he's denying Jesus again. You know why he was denying? He was afraid. He was afraid. He was fearful. He wasn't ready. He couldn't understand how Jesus could be arrested. He couldn't understand how this could happen. He was worried now he was going to die too. And he was going to die this senseless death. He was losing his faith. He was fearful. And what did he say? And again, he denied with an oath. I do not know the man. I don't even know who he is. And he made an oath. You know what an oath is? A vow? You know how important a vow is? When you make a vow to the Lord, especially during those times, you have to keep your vow. If you don't keep your vows, it's a, always a strict punishment that goes along with breaking vows. So he says, I want to make a vow. I vow to you. I promise. That's a promise. That's a declaration to God. I'm going to make a promise to God that I do not even know who this man is. Is that failure? What did he just say? I'll die with you. Do we do things like that? We make declarations, don't we? And then what happened? And after a while came unto him they that stood by and said to Peter, this is the third time, surely thou also art one of them, for thy speech bereath thee, or betrayeth thee. That means you're saying something, but your speech, I can tell you, are with him. You're a Hebrew, you have that speech. Oh, well, you sound like a disciple. Your speech exposes you. Then began he to curse and swear, saying, I know not the man. Not only did he deny the first time, the second time he denied with an oath to God, saying, I promise to God, I don't know him. And then the third, I want to prove to you the third time. I'll go to the point where I'm going to start cursing and swearing, cursing out, spouting out these swear words. I don't believe beep, 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 beep. There was no beep system back then, but if there was a beep, you'd be hearing a lot of beeps out of Peter's mouth. He was swearing like a drunken sailor, saying, I don't know who he is. Oh. Oops. <laughs> I don't know who that man is. And all of a sudden, what happened? What happened? The rooster crowed. He says, when the cock crows twice, you'll deny me thrice. <laughs> he denied him once, simply just said, I don't know him. The second time, he denied him, making an oath unto God, saying, I don't know Jesus. And the third time, he denied him, and he started cursing Peter. And this is a man of God. This is an apostle. Has anyone ever failed before? Has anyone had a bad day before? Has anyone had a passion to do something right for God and ended up making a complete fool of themselves and a disaster? Has anyone had a disaster? Welcome to the world of mankind. We all have an Adamic nature. No one is perfect. That's why God gives us grace upon grace because he knows even Peter, the man of God, denied Jesus three times times and he was used mightily for the Lord. He failed at the greatest failure he could have ever had in his life. And then what does it say? He went out and wept bitterly. When you fail sometimes really bad, it causes you to weep bitterly. Has anyone ever cried when they, they have wept to the point where it was just like so excruciating that you couldn't even control the streams of tears? Imagine losing your business. Imagine losing your job. Imagine losing your home. Imagine losing a loved one or a spouse. Or imagine losing a case that you are trying to win. Or imagine losing something, you know, that you valued so much or you tried to do something in ministry and you failed. And you know how many people want to see you fail? People want you to fail. 
this world, they don't want to see you succeed. They get jealous. You get the naysayers coming at you. And when you're down and you're failing like Job's friends, you're going to find evil friends to come. When you're down, that's when you're going to find your worst enemies. When you're failing, that's when people are the happiest, some people. You need some close people when you're down that will lift you up. When you're feeling depressed, they're going to come to you and build you up. You know that? God has people for you that he, you got to surround yourself with the right people. You want to be successful? Be around successful people. You want to be godly? Be around some godly people. You want to learn a lesson? Look back and look what happened. Peter looked back and says, I'm not going to say I'm going to do anything. If Peter was, the right response would have been for Peter to say this, Lord, I want to stay with you. And I will give it everything I got in my heart, but I need you to help me to not deny you because without you, I can do nothing. Without you and your power, I am filthy rags. Jesus is the one who does it. Jesus is the one who brings righteousness. My flesh dwelleth no good thing. The good that I would, that I do not. But that which is evil, that I do. I need Jesus, oh wretched man that I am. I need the power of grace upon grace in order for me to win the race. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're feeling like you failed today, yeah. if you're feeling like you haven't done enough today, if you feel like you've not reached your maximum potential, remember this. Look what Peter did and look what God did through him. Look what he did. Do you understand the pain this man was going through? The pain was beyond anything I could even begin to describe. He denied the Son of God and realized it. Because when that rooster crowed the third time, or the second time, when he denied him three times, and that the cock crowed twice, the rooster, he remembered what Jesus said to him. He was like, Jesus said I could deny you. And I did. I didn't want to. Do you know Peter didn't want to know? Do you think Peter wanted to? Of course not. He loved Jesus. You know how much he loved Jesus? He was always around Jesus everywhere, speaking, saying stupid things, doing everything. Let's build three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. And let's hang out here, Lord. You know, this is what Peter was always doing, cutting the ear off of the, the person who arrested Jesus. Why do you think he loved Jesus? Give me a sword, you ain't going to arrest my Lord. That's how much he cared for Jesus. He was the one who cut the soldier's ear off. Peter, defending Jesus. Jesus healed his ear and said, we don't violently do things, Peter. We do things in the right way, in the right manner. That's how good he was. Now, Jesus died after this. Just think of Peter's pain. Do you know what? Think of your pain. Have you had any regrets in your life, mistakes that you've made? You look back and said, if I could have just done things a little bit differently. Why did I do this? Ever, ever look back at things you could have done right? And you look back, if I would have only made the right choices, how things would have been a lot better. I'm here to tell you something. He's the God of plan B. He's the God of plan C. He's the God of plan D. And when he comes in with his new plan, those regrets will quickly go away. Because God says, I'm about ready to do a new thing. Remember not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. God wants to do a new thing. Have you learned your lesson from your mistake? Get up. Feed my sheep, Peter. So what happened? I want to go to the book of Luke chapter 24. You guys there? Luke 24? Get to the word of God. And I love these new PowerPoints up in here. It's a real blessing. Now you guys online can see it, and it's really a blessing for you all to see as we're putting these PowerPoints up. We'll still work on them. But uh, what does it say in verse 33? It says this. It says, And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with him, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon Peter. Guess who Jesus appeared to first out of the apostles? He didn't appear to all twelve at the same time. He appeared to Peter first. It's not only there. Jesus had risen now from the dead. Peter sprinted to the sepulcher. 
to the grave when he heard that Jesus was not there. He sprinted there. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 through 5, if you read those scriptures, it says he appeared to Cephas. Cephas is Peter. And then he appeared to the, uh, the other apostles. After that, then 500 more he appeared to. But he came to Peter first. Why would he appear to Peter before everybody else? He knew the pain. He knew the agony that he was going through. I denied the Lord. I want to kill myself. I'm a mess. How could I ever deny Jesus like this? And Jesus said, I got to go find my servant. I love him so much. I got to find the one who made the biggest failure and comfort. Isn't that love? Isn't that grace? When you make your biggest mistake, you have your biggest hiccup in faith. When you did something that you thought wasn't right, when you made the biggest failure of all, the biggest failure you could possibly do, God's like, now I'm ready to use you. Do you know I was called to preach? I was young, new in the Lord. I had my greatest failure. I was preaching, too. I was reading the Bible. I was ready to go to Bible school. I had my biggest failure I ever had spiritually. I went and did a message for the Lord, and that during that time, I was feeling so unworthy. And as I was preaching, the Lord says, I'm calling you full time. This is what you're meant to do. I'm calling you to preach. Amen. Go and do what I've called you to do. You're no failure. You're my child. You're no failure. You're the one I died for. I'm going to show people what I, somebody who failed looks like when I raise them up and do amazing things. You used to be a drug addict. Now you're going to be a preacher. You used to be in the pit. Now I'm taking you to the palace. You used to make these mistakes. But even if you make mistakes, I'm going to take you to places no one could ever take you because God looks at the base things of the world and he lifts them up to do amazing things for his kingdom. Can somebody praise him this morning? God is a God of love and mercy. And I believe me, I've had a lot of stumbles in my life too. We've all made mistakes. And this time I'm going to run my marathon. And this time the foot is feeling great. I will not be defeated. Oops. Oh, no. I'm getting in trouble with these puns. No, please. <laughs> but what we need to do is we need to get up and keep going. How many people are warriors today? A just man falls seven times and rises up again. It says a just man's going to fall seven times doesn't mean a just man walks and never makes mistakes and fails. A, a champion is one who falls and gets back up. I will not stop. I will get up every day. You say, look, at you're in a smaller church. Things aren't going right. I'm going to get up every day. I don't care if it's two people, five people, ten people, twenty people. It don't matter. Where's the people? God is going to usher in the people when he says it's time. And when it's time, there ain't going to be no containing it anymore. It's going to be so overwhelming, I'm going to say, what happened? Jesus happened. He is testing us and saying, can you stay humble? Can you praise me? Can you keep your eye on the prize and say, I don't care what I got. As long as I got Jesus, I got everything I could ever want and more. Can somebody praise him and say, I'm doing it to him, not for anything else. Peter was doing it for Jesus. And he came to Jesus, didn't he? I just want to give you a couple more scriptures before I close. I want to go to the book of John. Now, Jesus came to Peter, and he comforted Peter, and he hugged Peter, and Peter got on his knees and worshiped the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, I got to tell somebody what Jesus did for me. I got to tell somebody, when I failed, I was down. I was at the worst place I could ever possibly be. Nobody, I could have anybody to turn to, not even God. I had nobody. I was devastated. And Jesus came to me first, and he hugged on me, and he says, you're forgiven. You are washed. You are my child, and I love you, Peter. Let it go. You are healed. I am alive, and you're going to be with me for all eternity. So tell the world about me. I'm about ready to use you. So what had happened? This is a very interesting conversation in John chapter 21. This is very interesting. Peter is now talking to Jesus. Jesus is resurrected. 
So when they had dined, they were having dinner together. Peter's like, oh, I got Jesus back. I'm feeling so much better. My life has changed. Isn't that grace? The one that denied him three times, Jesus is like, come back now. You know how many times we deny him? He loves us. There's nothing you can do to stop his love for you. I don't care what you've done. He loves you that much. Look what Peter did. <laughs> he did, straight out denied and cursed. I deny him. I don't even know who he is. And Jesus is there now. I love you. Come on. Grow up now. Did you learn your lesson? Now you failed. Now you're going to do something great. Look what he says. He said, after they died, Jesus said to Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, or son of Jonah, he says, Lovest thou me more than these? Do you love me more than anything else in this world? Of course. Look as Peter says. He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. And he said, Feed my lambs. Tell my lambs, my sheep, my children about me. Tell the world about me. Do you love me? Do my business. I don't care how many people you have. I don't care what prestige and prominence you have. I don't care about how much money you have. Well, I care about one thing. Feed my sheep. Obey me. If you love me more than these, prove it. Go ahead and obey me. If you love me, keep my commandments. That means preach to the world. You're not perfect, but feed my sheep. Amen. Verse 16, he saith unto him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? And he saith unto him, Peter, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. And he saith unto him, feed my sheep. Notice how he said this twice. How many times did Peter deny Jesus? How many times did Jesus just tell Peter to feed the sheep? It's going to be three. And then he saith unto him a third time. Notice how there's three times to overcome the three times that he denied him. I'm going to give you three times the mission now. You denied me three times, now I'm going to tell you to do something to exile. Let your obedience destroy and remove your disobedience. I'm going to do this a third time. Cool. Awesome. Isn't that cool? Yeah, very cool? He says it's the third time. He did it for a reason. You denied me three times, I'm going to tell you this three times. He says, Simon, son of Jonas, love us, Tommy. Did it again. Peter was grieved, hungry. Good. Good. What are you doing to me a third time? He said a third time, love us, thou me. Peter was grieved because he had said unto him a third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. You know everything. Thou knowest that I love thee. Even though I denied you three times. Oops. <laughs> Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. So what did Peter do? He fed him. Let's go to the book of Acts real quick. He fed the sheep. He fed the sheep. This is it. We're going to close out with this. He was hanging. He was dining with Jesus. Jesus forgave him. Peter was feeling so much better. They were chatting together. Now Jesus gave him the message three times. Your mission in life is an apostle to feed my sheep. If your mission is, mission is in business, use your business to glorify God. If you're in a mission to do something in ministry, do that ministry to glorify God. If you're in anything you're doing, do it all to the glory of God. Feed God's sheep however you choose to. You need to be a blessing, salt and light in this dark world. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. Can someone praise God? We are the salt of the earth. We are salt and light, brother. Hallelujah. Now what happened? Pentecost happened, the power of the Holy Ghost. You say, I don't know about the power of the Holy Ghost. Here it comes. Jesus resurrected. He said, feed my sheep, Peter. Now all of a sudden, he said, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit, a comforter. The comforter came. The Holy Ghost came. They were speaking in tongues. They were prophesying. They were filled, baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. That's what you need to get, by the way, after you get saved. Filled up with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And he was preaching to them and said, you are not drunk. These people aren't drunk. They're speaking in tongues as you suppose, but they are filled with the Holy Ghost as the prophet of Joel has spoken. And he kept on preaching and the Jewish people got convicted. Verse 37. Now when they heard this, the preaching of Peter at Pentecost, 
It says they were pricked in their heart. That means they were cut to the heart with the preaching of Jesus Christ being resurrected. He said, you crucified him, and he rose on the third day. You're the one who did it, and now if you deny him, you're going to end up in hell for all eternity. You're the ones who did it. His blood be on your hands because of what you did. You denied him, but you have a chance now. And he says, they were pricked in heart, said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? To preach it. Peter's preaching. This guy denied three, Jesus three times. Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized. By the way, the word repent is there. Let's preach repentance. Come on, everybody. It needs to be preached in salvation. Because I'm going to say, man, we need to hear more repentance and not this watered-down message. I'm doing grace upon grace, and I'm talking about repent. Repent. Turn from sin to God and repent. That's how you get baptized in the Holy Ghost. It says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. Remission means forgiveness of sin sin. The minute you repent, you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, not in water, in the Holy Ghost. And it says you will be given the gift of the Holy Ghost, not to be worked for, but to be received by faith and grace, not on your merit, but on his power. You get baptized because of grace upon grace. And he said it in the power of the Holy Ghost, the oracles of God, he said, repent. If a preacher's not preaching, repent, they got to wake up and start preaching it. Because Peter preached it. And what does it say? For the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many that call upon, as many as are of the Lord our God shall call. And with many words did Peter testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. That untoward means crooked. Then they that gladly received his word, Peter was preaching, were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. A mega church was birthed from a man who denied Jesus three times. You want to see what God can do to a wretched sinner? Say, I'm a wretched sinner. You may be the person used to win 3,000 to Christ. God don't care what your past is. God don't care about where you've been. God don't care about all the things you think you struggle with. God's saying, you're my champion. Start acting like it. Get up and start following me, flaws and all. I will give you grace when you need it, and I will give you power when you need it. And I will use you to win cases. I'll use you to explode in your business. I'll use you to reach your destiny. And when you hit your biggest failure, that means something exciting is about ready to happen. Don't let failure and discouragement put you in, to, in this state of isolation and discouragement in a pity party. Use it to springboard yourself into your God-given destiny. That's 3,000 souls at Pentecost. Can somebody praise them? this morning. Take your failure and bring it to success. I'm done preaching. I'm finished. This is what God wants to do. From failure to success, this is what God does. He did it for Peter. He did it for David. He did it for Solomon. Don't look at yourself and say, I'm some sinner. You've got to look at yourself as his child. You're righteous. God's not looking at your sin. Satan says, look at your sin. God says, look at my son. Amen. Can someone praise God? Look at this, the son. There's no perfect people. We should just be obedient people and repent. And trust God. When you make a mistake, repent and keep going. It's okay. And if you have struggles, God understands those struggles. You're going to have battles and struggles until you get to heaven. Sorry, we're all going to have battles. We're all going to have failures. And God loves you, flaws and all. That's how good he is. That's why it's grace. I've seen it every, all the time. I make the worst decision, and I'm like, oh, the Lord must be real mad at me. And he brings in some amazing blessing, even when I'm messing up. And I'm like, oh, wow. How good is my God? It makes me want to. It makes me want to repent his grace and love. It's not about rules and regulations, guilt trips and condemnation. 
His love, I do it for his love. Wow. His love is what makes you obey God. It's power, brother. Power. It's not about do's and don'ts and re religion. This is what God is. You know it. How blessed are you even with all the things you do wrong? Amen. Be real. Amen. It's reality. That's his love for you. Yeah. He did it for Peter. He'll do it for you. And he's going to take you to places no man can take you. God bless you. We praise God. Amen. I just want to get a message for these people that are watching online. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, please get saved. You gotta repent. It's not some easy believism, watered down gospel. It's about turning from sin and receiving Christ in your heart. We want real, true converts. You can do that on your own. Just call upon Jesus, turn from your sins, invite him into your heart, receive the Holy Spirit. You can pray. It's not some magic potion. It's just praying with your heart to the Lord and accepting him in your heart. You'll be saved and you'll have eternal life. God bless you.